Welcome to the game. I'm Dan Hume, your commentator. You join me playing Zero K, or rather, watching some people play Zero K. Uh, this map is Drab, and this is uh, that's not a value judgment. That actually is the name of the map. It's quite far from Drab. In fact, it's uh, quite an interesting map with these uh, different uh, metal points with different amounts of metal in them. And that's uh, kind of why I'm here today. I've been making some changes to the uh, the metal point uh, controlling and drawing widgets. And so I'd like to show them to you now. Uh, you can see right from the start that uh, each metal point has a different number of rings around it. And the rings show how much uh, metal you get from that point. So 3.46 is close to 3. There are 3 rings. 2.11, there are 2 rings. Uh, there are always the number of rings closest to how much metal you get per second. And you can you can really see that the, the metal extractors uh, in the starting points... Uh, with the 5.2 there, they're the really big ones, and the uh, the same key is echoed on the map with uh, a number of rings. So it's it's not quite as easy to see on the mini map uh, as the the rings are of course are closer together. However, uh, e you know even if you can't see uh, exactly the number on the uh, mini map, you can still see that the more important metal points show up bigger in this view. Um, there's some interesting opening here. Right, I should go into a bit about the game. We've got Clone in the northwest here. Uh, he's gone for a, a jumpy lab uh, and a few defenders at the top. And Laurie is in the southeast here. He has gone for light vehicles, so he'll be uh, spamming scorches, I expect. Yes, here's a scorcher. Uh, and Mason coming out to help him build up. And, and I expect there'll be some slashes along soon. Oh, yes. Well, no, no slashes yet, but he's got more scorches and, and Mason's queued up. Um, in the uh, the game before this one, it was very short. Uh, Laurie went for a, a, an early uh, airplane rush. She built a few shadows. Uh, quite a successful early attack, but then I had no way to defend against Clone's counterattack. So a handful of glaives wiped out Laurie's entire base, and uh, he resigned pretty quickly after that loss. Um, so it was an interesting an interesting try of a strategy, but the uh, the game. Didn't really turn out as very entertaining as a result. It was a very quick loss. Um, so hopefully this one will be a bit more interesting. And uh, we'll get to see what's going on with the economy with people taking these different metal points. Uh, so Laurie is uh, sending his, his Scorcher spam. Not that it's really spam, there are only five of them. Uh, around here. Oh, and he does have a few slashes coming out now. Uh, so he's trying to find how far out Clone has got, how uh, how defended his uh, his base is, and whether he's taken these metal points in the south yet. Um, he's managed to find a lot of defenders. Very quickly managing to take out Clone's commander there. That's really going to change the balance of this game. It gives Lurry a huge advantage. Um, he's got twice the metal of Clone already. Uh, however, uh, Clone's Freaker which is the jumpy constructor, uh, bypassing the uh, the reclaim there. So that's 580 metal for Clone to get back uh, after losing his commander. Uh, also with some moderators coming out. It's very hard to, to play as jumpies on single player. You don't see it as often as, as the vehicle and K-Bot factories. Uh, sorry, the bot factories. Because its units are just a bizarre. Uh, they they've all got very interesting uses and special things they can do. But it's it's a whole army made up of special weapons bots, so um, it's hard to play with that as your only factory. Uh, and we can see clones already. Uh, perhaps he's convincing himself not to do it again. He's uh, starting to get the reclaim from that commander. Uh, and it's still building up a bit. He's stopped raiding now. Um, even though, it, like, if he goes to the south here, there's, there could still be a, a clear path right into the heart of Laurie's base. He could take out his factory there without too much trouble. Um, there's only there's only one Lotus covering it. Um, but, of course, clones not to know that. That would be a risk, and he really doesn't have the units to uh, to take that risk. And he still only has about half the economy of Laurie. Um, getting his uh, his jack 
wading through the shallow water there. If you're not used to uh, how units, uh, how unit pathfinding works in zero k, uh, some water is shallow enough that uh, bots can walk through it, and ships cannot pass across it. Uh, so some maps have uh, a lot of water with shallows that allow bots to cross the water to to make for a bit more interesting interplay between the ships and the land units. Um, and the the river through the middle of this is, uh, is is decorative more than anything else. It doesn't it doesn't have a huge effect on the pathfinding. It just slows things down as they have to cross that water. Uh, Laurie moving forward now. He's been very good at taking these these metal points as he expands. We can see uh, he's he's got the bigger ones here in his base, and this one over here, and he's taking the smaller ones as well. He's not leaving those. Uh, going for that two metal point there. Uh, whereas Clone, you know, is keeping his economy small. He's expanded a little bit. He's taken this one here and, and here, which one's a, a bigger point. Uh, but he's not taken the southern half of his island um, and doesn't have the wherewithal to defend it from these scorches that are patrolling the area. So he's going to he's gonna keep his, his economy behind the... However, saying that, he's, his, you know, his big shortage at the moment is not metal but energy. He's, um, he's got quite a lot of metal in the bank, not a lot of energy. Um, he's having to build more solar collectors now to, to keep his energy uh, level with his, his metal income. And it is something that's easy, easy to forget uh, for, for new players and for commentators who are just watching the game. That it's not just a question of going out and taking more metal points to increase your economy. You also have to make sure you're always uh, building more solar collectors or wind or fusions or whatever. Um, uh, and we've just seen the, actually a, a jumping attack from Pyros and a Jack has managed to take out uh, Laurie's level 1 commander there in the centre. Um, even though it was, it looked like a completely hopeless attack because Laurie has uh, a whole handful of ravages to, to protect him, but just uh, a few of those uh, jumping, flaming pyros, uh, along with that Jack, who actually managed to do a really targeted attack there. Um, and then they, you know, they themselves died, but they achieved the objective and killed Laurie's commander. So. Laurie's going to be lacking in build power a bit now. He's got no constructors on the front line here to, to rebuild the centre and to expand from here. Uh, he's got one in the corner here, which is building uh, solars. And if we look at its queue, it's going to build solars and then uh, build... That looks like a radar ghost. Uh, so he's going to build a radar on the, the peak of the mountain there. Um, and that looks like uh, everything else is in his base. He's got a handful more masons there. Um... He's also going for a fax switch at this point, so he's gone for uh, gunships and he's got a load of banshees queued up here. Also, this jack is being very hard to hit. Um, it's managed to get in amongst all the ravagers, so they can't really shoot it without also hurting themselves. Um, that's been very effective use of that jack. And uh, so they destroyed most of the Ravagers. They've driven off the, the Survivor along with that Scorcher. However, a Slash is now coming up to uh, to press that attack. Uh, and it should be able to stop the Jack coming any closer. Uh, the Jacks do have lots of health. If we look, you see they start out with 5,000 health. So they really are designed for just tanking a load of damage from, from defensive units or structures while they plow right on to, to get to their target. Uh, and of course they have the jump jets like the other units from the jumpy factory so they can they can jump over land units to get to their target or to escape when they're um, when they're hurting a uh, clone very sensibly building a caretaker here that's a, an investment of 220 metal and it'll give him access to the a thousand metal in that area um you can see the the other effect here of the uh, the new the metal widgets changes that I've been working on which is that instead of the of the wrecks being blue, purple, or yellow, uh, which is a kind of confusing color code, 
Uh, they now just go from grey to purple, or grey to pink, perhaps, uh, depending on how you see the colours. So the commander we see is the is the unit with the most reclaim, or the wreck with the most reclaim on the map. So they're two very purple commanders. And then the, the jack is quite purple. They're expensive, 260 metal there. These are a little bit purple with uh, 100 metal, and then the smaller units with only 50 or so metal um, are almost white. And then the debris with you know, 26 metal is, is white there. Uh, so it's a, a lot easier to pinpoint those those valuable wreck fields as well as finding the valuable metal points with the, the multiple rings around them. Um, we can see here as well, Laurie's uh, launched his, his Banshee Strike. Uh, they're already they going, he's sending them off here to, to, uh, to raid metal points and uh, this time the, on the raiding he there is actually going to be some metal points here to um, for him to raid as clone sent is is constructed there to take those however he's uh, very sensibly run away there and building a defender so uh, very good response there from clone he was obviously keeping his eyes on the situation not quite quick enough though those uh lorries seeing the defender going up and, and counter-attacking it before it completes So a jack there jumping into the air to poke the Banshee, doing a lot of damage to it that way actually. That was surprisingly effective, but not quite effective enough. The Banshee manages to run away and regroup with its friends. So of the, the, the Banshee uh, attack force, there's, there's one on full health and two that are really badly hurting. We can see on the left here. Uh, we can see also that Laurie is going for a third factory, which is an interesting choice. It's almost finished. Um, you can tell Laurie is, is winning economically because he's just ploughing uh, metal into all of these useful, useless projects. Um, so he built the, the gunship plant and he's just left it behind. Uh, you know, it's, it's not he's not got any units queued up from that. Though he has got a Black Dawn that he's, uh, he built that finished the queue off. Uh, that's just sitting in his base now doing nothing. Uh, QB asking, why do you not have sync news? Um... And it is that kind of game. Laurie could, uh, with his, his metal economy, he could easily afford to build a singularity reactor and have enough energy to, to finish the game that way. Clone now bringing out Archangels. Uh, these are the anti-air units of the, the jumpy factory. With a, a little pokeball on the front, it looks like. Um, but it's this turret for a head that it has that's the, the real danger for your air player and for your gunships. Uh, however, it's Scorchers again that are coming in here, one of them getting stuck a bit amongst all these wrecks and the Solar Collectors. Uh, but a raid and a quicker run away. Um, clone almost entirely using Jax as offensive units here, that's uh, an, an interesting... Uh, an interesting strategy there. Uh, um, perhaps a few more Pyros in his army. Would uh, would help him defend against attacks like that. They could, you know, quickly respond to incoming attacks. Clone now going for a fusion plant, uh, perhaps to kind of prove his point about how much metal there is on this map. Um, however, he's he's also proving the point by ignoring all of this reclaim all over the place. Um. He could have a bit more build power. Oh, he's building a firewalker as well, so he's going to be he's going to be busy. Uh, you know, clone's going to be stalled on metal until that firewalker finishes. So that's another two and a half minutes, really. So um, yeah, let, let's wait and see if uh, he's still here in two and a half minutes for that firewalker to come out and uh, walk over the whole map. However. It could be vulnerable to the Black Dawn. Black Dawn looks like it's going to come around the top here, and, and yeah, it's got some fight orders going on. There's some land battle going on. Um, lots of the Jacks getting surrounded by Scorchers. A big group jump. They, they've managed to take out all of the attacking units, but uh, at great cost of their own health. Meanwhile, the Black Dawn um, making it up to... Uh, up to clone space, taking a metal extractor there. This makes can easily make 40 metal per second, says Cubo, which, oh, sorry, says, uh, 
Yes, that's cute, buddy. Um, it's already on 11, even though it's only at uh, 5 mass points because of uh, all of the energy around it. And the Firewalker is out. Um, you can see it's spreading fire all around it. So, uh, let's see where it's going. You can see the huge range of the Firewalker here means it doesn't need to uh, to get close to enemy defences. It can really just hang back here and uh, and just take out these clusters. Attacking this, this one slasher is a bit of a waste. Um, it wants to be going for a cluster, really. Oh, it looks like there's some morphing going on. The Jack is morphing into a sumo, so uh, good use of morphing. Something you don't see that often in the game, except for commander morphs. Oh, however, the, the morph cancelled there as the um, the Jack has to defend itself. That's the the one danger of morphing units. Really, they they're very vulnerable while they're morphing. You want to do it where they where they're safe. So the Firewalker I'm almost dead there, and. Well, clone. Oh yeah, so the Firewalker. Uh, yeah, clone. Clone resign there. So it's an interesting choice of time to resign. He had the Firewalker. It didn't quite die to the Black Dawn. He'd taken down the Black Dawn, which was the major incoming threat to him. Um, he was well behind economically. Perhaps uh, he just got fed up with the idea that uh, that Lorry can can just build a nuke any time. Lorry has you know so so much uh, metal advantage really. So I feel that perhaps that was a bit of an early resignation, but even so, an interesting game, and uh, and I hope you've also enjoyed seeing the uh, the metal point changes and the uh, the wreck changes that I've been uh, testing out locally, and uh, I hope I can get those into the main game so that everybody else can enjoy them as well. Thank you for watching, and thank you for for paying attention to uh, me rambling about all of these uh, GUI changes. I hope you've enjoyed the game. I hope you'll continue to enjoy my Zero K casts. See you again next time. I've been Dan Hume, and this has been Zero K.